I've done a lot of Mac tips over the years, and I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm running out. But look, I'm not some chump that's gonna reuse old tips. Oh no, I've got some awesome ones planned for you, but this might be the last Mac tips video for a while, at least until Apple adds some new ones. Speaking of ads, this video doesn't have one, okay, so don't go anywhere, but I do want to announce my new podcast, Flashback on Relay FM. My co-host, Stephen Hackett, and I talk about old tech failures and what we can learn from them. Our first episode on the infamous Apple Newton is already available anywhere you get your podcasts, with other episodes like the Microsoft Zune and General Motors EV1 coming soon. Search Flashback by Relay FM or visit the link below. I'd really appreciate it. Okay, shut up, it's tips time. I think most old school Mac guys like myself prefer to search for stuff inside of the Finder, but I know that realistically, most people are using Spotlight and Spotlight does a really an excellent job at finding files. Once you found your file, everyone knows that you can press enter to open that file. But what people don't know is that you can hold down the command key and that will actually show you the path to the folder in which the file is located. And while holding down command, if you press the R key, that will actually open up the file inside of the folder on Finder. Really easy way to locate stuff using Spotlight. This next one is simple, but I used it almost every day in school. It doesn't save that much time, but in any web browser in Mac OS at any time, you can press command L and it will highlight the URL in the address bar, which you can then copy or paste into another application. Sure, you could just mouse up there and select it that way, but it's nice to do it this way. Another one that people probably know is when you're in a text document in any text editor on Mac OS, just about notes, text edit, word, etc., you can make a hyperlink by pressing command K. And then we can paste the link to the destination. We press OK. And that has turned the word neat into our URL that is clickable. Uh, this is one that, again, most people know, but if you don't, it's one you're gonna wanna know. Let me be very clear, I do not like Windows, but one thing Windows does undeniably better than Mac OS is, well, actually, I guess it's in the name, window management, which has always been kind of sucky on Mac OS. And on Windows, I love that you can snap windows to the left or right or upside of the screen. And you can actually do that with a third party tool called Magnet or Better Snap Tool. There are many of them available for Mac OS, but Apple did improve things recently in a uh, latest version of uh, Mac OS. And that is that these little radio buttons over here, if you hold your mouse over them long enough, you'll be able to see this drop-down selection where you can enter the app full screen and or split it to the left and right side of the window, just like the iPad. You can select another window and that'll take the other half and then you can resize accordingly. It's really not the best way to do things, but it does work. You'll also notice if you have an iPad on the same network that you can, from this button, open that window in Sidecar on your iPad, which is kind of handy. I assume that most people know about hot corners, wherein you can specify an action when you move your mouse into a specific corner. They're handy. The problem is that on smaller displays, they're very easily uh, accidentally triggered, I should say. And so what you can do in Mac OS, and Apple really doesn't make a big deal about that, but you can use modifier keys. So you can hold down the option key, the command key, or the option and the command key to then trigger an action. So if I have this do desktop in the top right corner, if I move my mouse up there, won't work. If I hold down command, won't work. But if I hold down command and option, there you go. So this allows you to set a modifier for hotkeys so that they're a little less accidentally triggered. Unfortunately, you can't double up in one corner, which is really a shame. They should add that. I think just about every Mac user knows about command H, which allows you to hide your currently active app. But what a lot of people don't know about is that you can do command option H and it does the inverse. It hides everything except for the app that you have currently selected, which is a great way to clean up your workspace. Okay, let me show you one more here. And that is that in any application with multiple windows, Everyone knows that you can do command tab to cycle through apps, right? But you can actually do command grave. The grave key is the one right above the tab key, the tilde. And that will actually cycle through your windows in an app that has multiple windows open. With both command tab and command grave, you can actually reverse the order in which you advance by holding down the shift modifier. So this gets a little complicated, but if I have uh, shift command tab, that goes backwards instead of forwards. So you let go of shift, you go forwards, you hold shift, you go backwards. And same thing with your tabs. So you do command grave to cycle through your windows left to right. And if I do shift command grave, then it goes backwards. And there you go. Oh, one last thing. Let's say you have a window in the background that you want to move over without deselecting your current window. You can actually just hold the command key and then drag the window. And that allows you to move this window wherever you want without actually making it the active window. Pretty handy. You guys sick of windows yet? I am.
Just about everyone knows that you can create a duplicate in macOS of a file by pressing Command D. What people don't know about, however, is a very old macOS feature that's been around since the Lisa. This thing is crazy old. It's called Stationary Pad. You can enable it by pressing Command I or entering the Git Info submenu from the File menu. And it's located here. And now that you see me pointing it out, you're probably thinking to yourself, what the crap? Why have I never noticed that before? <laughs> Stationary Pad, uh, back in the day of the Lisa, the idea was that users would create files by quote unquote, tearing off a piece of paper or an appropriate type of stationary, which allowed you to edit that file. There wasn't this whole notion or idea of launching apps like we do today. And macOS, for whatever reason, has kept this feature around for years and years and years. And you can now designate any file as stationary. Uh, so once you enable it, you'll note that if I double click this file now, it automatically creates a copy and opens it in the application that it's supposed to be opened in, the default application. This is great for forms and templates when you need to create multiple files. Now you might be wondering, okay, well, what's different about this than just clicking duplicate and then opening the file? This is stupid. Well, there are specific applications like Word that know about stationary. And so if you have an element in that document, such as a user prompted fill form, Word will automatically open up the document to the first fill form prompt, helping you save time, making it actually a pretty awesome way to easily and quickly fill out forms. It's this weird old relic that's been around forever, and for whatever reason has just stayed around in Mac OS. This is one that I forget about because it's just second nature to me as a Mac user, and I forget because it's totally not a thing in Windows, and it pisses me off every time I use that frickin' OS that should burn in the depths of hell. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Okay, anytime you have an upload window, so right here, we go to upload, choose file, and it's defaulting to the wrong folder, but I've already got the folder that I want over here on the left side in my finder. In Windows, you have to navigate to the path and it's an operating system made by gerbils. Well, in macOS, you just take the file that I want to upload, I drag it over into the window, and it properly copies the path. If you do that in Windows, it completely moves this file into whatever location that's in this window, which is the stupidest thing on the planet. But over here, it just works. You drag your file, you press choose, and you're done. Super handy. Okay, I gotta give Windows some credit. It does do one thing a lot more sensically than macOS. And that is in the File Explorer, or in Finder, when you want to move a file, Everyone knows you can press Command C to copy a file and then you press Command V to paste it, but that just creates a duplicate copy as you know it should. Well, in Windows, you can press Command X to cut a file and then press Command V to paste it into a destination folder and it actually moves the original file. In Mac OS, you have to copy the file and then you press Option Command V. And instead of pasting a copy that moves the original. It's way stupider than just Command X and com Command V, but it is what it is. I've already told you that one though. So, well, if you learned it for the first time, you're welcome. But that's probably a repeat for most of you. But what you can do is you can do the same thing across volumes. So I have over here my local hard drive and over here I have my server that's over the network. Now you can do the exact same action, but you can actually just easily move files in between volumes by holding down the command key when you drag. So if I just drag the file over, it's gonna create a duplicate. But if I dr hold command as I drag, that will create a duplicate and then it deletes the original file. Pretty handy. All right, this one's really easy. Everyone knows that you can click your Wi-Fi menu to change your Wi-Fi network. But what you can also do is hold down the option key and then click that menu, and it will give you a wealth of useful information like your IP address and router address over here. But it also allows you to disconnect from your current Wi-Fi network without turning your Wi-Fi off. Super handy if you wanna keep AirDrop available but wanna get off, say, a coffee shop network. Pretty sweet. This is one that I use all the time, but I'm kind of a weirdo. If you use the hidden dock, which by the way is the correct way to use a Mac, <laughs> but you're doing a task where you wanna quickly hide or unhide the dock and keep it visible, you can actually just press Option Command D in any app at any time. The dock will pop out and it stays there until you press Option Command D again, and then it'll go back into hiding. Pretty handy. I'm an old school Mac user, and I honestly, quite frankly, forget to use tabs in the Mac OS Finder. I like them, but I forget to do them, so I end up with windows all over the place. Well, what you can do is just click Window, and then click Merge All Windows. It takes all your windows, puts it into a single window, in tabs. Pretty cool. This one is one I think a lot of people know about, but in order to delete a file immediately, instead of dragging it to the trash, because then it just sits in the trash and you have to empty it out, you can press Command and then Backspace. It'll say, do you want to delete this screenshot? It will be deleted immediately. You can't undo this action. Once you press delete, it is gone. You can't undo that. And you also can't find it in the trash. So really make sure that when you want to get rid of something, you're ready to let it go. The good thing is if you want to get rid of something, it's gone with this action, command backspace. 
If you need to get to the applications folder super quickly, which I don't know about you, but I need to do with relative frequency, you can use Shift Command A as I've talked about in a previous video. There's a lot of other cool shortcuts like Shift Command D that gets you to the desktop that I've linked in the top right hand corner of the screen in a card. So click that if you want to see those. But this command, while helpful, only works when the finder is active. So if I go to Tweetbot over here, or if I'm doing work, I press Shift Command A and the applications folder just doesn't open. But what you can do is actually click, hold down the command key and then click an application in the dock and that will automatically open the application that you've clicked inside of the applications folder. This is mostly so that you can quickly find, oh, I need to find out where Google Chrome is. You click it and then you can uninstall it or see package contents or whatever you need to do. But it's also a really easy way to just get to the applications folder quickly. Go to your dock, hold down command, click an app, boom, you're there. This is one that I might have possibly mentioned in the past, but I'm saying it for my own reference because I always freaking forget that this is a thing. Notification Center is basically the bane of my existence and I only ever go in here to turn off do not disturb or to toggle do not disturb on and off. The problem is, is that that takes a couple clicks and then you got to scroll, it's not very intuitive. Well, if you hold down the option key as you click Notification Center, it will automatically toggle do not disturb on and off. I keep forgetting about this one, but it's freaking sweet. Alrighty, I'm about done with this video, so I want to lock my computer, but not put it to sleep because maybe I have things downloading or processes running in the background. All I have to do is press Control Command Q. Well, folks, that's all for me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome videos like this one, but most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.